Today, I'm going to be showing you how to maintain your original Xbox disk drive. There were three models produced during the life of the original Xbox. Those include the Thompson drive on the left, the Samsung drive in the middle, and the highly sought after Philips drive on the right. I'm going to be covering a few key points for each drive and the overall maintenance of your disk drive. Before we go any further, always make sure when you are opening your disk drive, you are exercising extreme care and caution as over time, the PCB inside can seize and get stuck to the outer housing. When this happens, <laughs> if you use too much force, it can not only break the PCB in its entirety, but it can also rip cables and traces. We don't want that. First up, we have how to manually eject your drive. On the Thompson model, it's on the bottom. You simply push down and out the drive comes. On the Samsung drive, you simply take a screwdriver to access the manual eject slide here. And note that one comes. On the Philips drives, right beside the disc spinning motor, you will see this little plastic arm here. You simply slide it and out the drive comes. On every tutorial I have ever seen made on taking apart the disk drive, no one ever covers how to release the disk tray clips. I don't know why. It's quite important, important to know how to do it so you don't break anything, but I digress. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. On Starting on the Thompson drive, there is this fin looking thing. See that, it looks like a fin. That is your release clip. You're simply going to push on it while sliding out at the same time. And that, ooh, on the other side get stuff, is what holds the disc tray in its place. Once removed, the disc tray comes out. On the Samsung drive, you will see two release clips on each side of the disc tray. They are slightly below the disc tray itself. They are in these two little rectangular compartments. So what you wanna do is with one hand, you're going to take a pair of tweezers or a screwdriver and push down on this clip right here. While holding down, you're going to slide the tray out. You're gonna to need to do this twice, once on each side. So once the tray starts to move, it should stay in its position and you can move over to the second side and do the same thing. Once both have been pushed down, the tray slides right out. On the Phillips drive, the release clip is on the left-hand side of the disc tray, and it is built right in, as you can see here. All you have to do is take your fingernail, get underneath there, push up, and slide. And out it comes. With the disc tray fully removed now, you can see all the inner workings of the disc drive in what is oftentimes the harsh light of day. So the next thing you wanna make sure you do is give this guy a nice thorough clean. Best way to do that, Q-tip, little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and go to town. Important to note though, Make sure you're using at least 90% isopropyl alcohol, as this, this ensures no damage and proper evaporation. You've probably heard many times that as time goes by, the elasticity of the drive belt becomes less and less responsive, which can lead to the disc drive getting stuck and not properly ejecting your disc. That's this little thing right here. And oftentimes you can tell because it may actually even be worn when you remove it and just hang in by a thread. 
Luckily, replacements are pennies. I got a pack of 25 for, I believe, $5. Super easy to get. Super easy to reinstall. And you're back on your way. Another common problem not talked about often enough is the laser head and the laser head ribbon cable. Over time, whether it's a nudge or maybe a drop or it's just been used a lot and moved around, all of these can sometimes lead to the ribbon cable coming either loose or being disconnected in its entirety and sometimes even damaged. So while you have the disk drive open, it's important to inspect this cable and make sure it is not only securely fastened, but that it's uniform. So it's not sticking out more on one side. So what you can do is also release this tab here. So you can do that on some models by pushing down. Some mo models will need to be pushed up. And if the housing and connector are black, that means that you can just pull the ribbon cable straight out. Once you've inspected it and determined that there's nothing wrong with it, you can simply reinsert it and flip the clip up in the opposite direction, just like that, indicating that it is now securely fastened again and ready to go. The last point I want to bring up in this video is another commonly overlooked contributor to the eject error you might have on your unit. Among other things, a contributor can be the disc tray itself. So at the factory, every disc tray was greased on the other side along the rails that the disc tray slides along. Now, over time, grease can harden and sometimes solidify in its entirety. And sometimes when this happens, it can find itself in places that was not originally intended for grease to be. Two of these places are in the corners of the disc tray. And when this happens, it interferes with how the disc tray opens and closes. When that happens, that's a contributor to, or in its entirety, why you may be getting the eject error on your unit. So before you put your unit back together, make sure you inspect the underside of your disc tray and make sure that the corners are free from any buildup of grease.